Good morning. Welcome to our first ever OpenAI Dev Day. About a year ago, November 30th, we shipped ChatGPT as a low-key research preview. And that went pretty well. We followed that up with the launch of GPT-4, still the most capable model out in the world. And in the last few months, we launched voice and vision capabilities so that ChatGPT can now see, hear, and speak. And more recently, we launched Dolly 3, the world's most advanced image model. You can use it, of course, inside of ChatGPT. For our enterprise customers, we launched ChatGPT Enterprise, which offers enterprise-grade security and privacy, higher-speed GPT-4 access, longer context windows, a lot more. Today, we've got about 2 million developers building on our API for a wide variety of use cases, doing amazing stuff. Over 92% of Fortune 500 companies building on our products. And we have about 100 million weekly active users now on ChatGPT. And what's incredible on that is we got there entirely through word of mouth. People just find it useful and tell their friends. OpenAI is the most advanced and the most widely used AI platform in the world now. So now, on to the new stuff, and we have got a lot. Today, we are launching a new model, GPT-4 Turbo. We've got six major things to talk about for this part. Number one, context length. A lot of people have tasks that require a much longer context length. GPT-4 supported up to 8K, and in some cases, up to 32K context length. GPT-4 Turbo supports up to 128,000 tokens of context. That's 300 pages of a standard book, 16 times longer than our 8K context. And in addition to longer context length, you'll notice that the model is much more accurate over a long context. Number two, more control. We've heard loud and clear that developers need more control over the model's responses and outputs. So we've addressed that in a number of ways. We have a new feature called JSON mode, which ensures that the model will respond with valid JSON. The model is also much better at function calling. You can now call many functions at once. And it'll do better at following instructions in general. We're also introducing a new feature called reproducible outputs. You can pass a seed parameter, and it'll make the model return consistent outputs. This, of course, gives you a higher degree of control over model behavior. This rolls out in beta today. All right, number three, better world knowledge. We're launching retrieval in the platform. You can bring knowledge from outside documents or databases into whatever you're building. We're also updating the knowledge cutoff. We are just as annoyed as all of you, probably more, that GPT-4's knowledge about the world ended in 2021. We will try to never let it get that out of date again. GPT-4 Turbo has knowledge about the world up to April of 2023, and we will continue to improve that over time. Number four, new modalities. Surprising no one, Dolly 3, GPT-4 Turbo with Vision, and the new text-to-speech model are all going into the API today. GPT-4 Turbo can now accept images as inputs via the API. It can generate captions, classifications, and analysis. For example, Be My Eyes uses this technology to help people who are blind or have low vision with their daily tasks like identifying products in front of them. And with our new text-to-speech model, you'll be able to generate incredibly natural-sounding audio from text in the API with six preset voices to choose from. I'll play an example. Did you know that Alexander Graham Bell, the eminent inventor, was enchanted by the world of sounds? His ingenious mind led to the creation of the graphophone, which etched sounds onto wax, making voices whisper through time. This is much more natural than anything else we've heard out there. Voice can make apps more natural to interact with and more accessible. It also unlocks a lot of use cases like language learning and voice assistance. Speaking of new modalities, we're also releasing the next version of our open source speech recognition model, Whisper v3 today, and it'll be coming soon to the API. It features improved performance across many languages, and we think you're really going to like it. OK, number five, customization. You may want a model to learn a completely new knowledge domain or to use a lot of proprietary data. So today, we're launching a new program called Custom Models. With Custom Models, our researchers will work closely with a company to help them make a great custom model, especially for them and their use case using our tools. In the interest of expectations, at least initially, it won't be cheap. But if you're excited to push things as far as they can currently go, please get in touch with us, and we think we can do something pretty great. OK, and then number six, higher rate limits. We're doubling the tokens per minute for all of our established GPT-4 customers so that it's easier to do more. 
in addition to these rate limits, we're introducing copyright shield. Copyright shield means that we will step in and defend our customers and pay the costs incurred if you face legal claims around copyright infringement. And this applies both to ChatGPT Enterprise and the API. And let me be clear, this is a good time to remind people, we do not train on data from the API or ChatGPT Enterprise ever. There's actually one more developer request that's been even bigger than all of these, and that's pricing. And GPT-4 Turbo, a better model, is considerably cheaper than GPT-4 by a factor of 3x for prompt tokens and 2x for completion tokens starting today. The new pricing is 1 cent per 1,000 prompt tokens and 3 cents per 1,000 completion tokens. For most customers, that will lead to a blended rate more than 2.75 times cheaper to use for GPT-4 Turbo than GPT-4. We work super hard to make this happen. We hope you're as excited about it as we are. In all of this, we're lucky to have a partner who is instrumental in making it happen. So I'd like to bring out a special guest, Satya Nadella, the CEO of Microsoft. Thank you so much. Thank you. Satya, th thanks so much for coming here. How, are, how is Microsoft thinking about the partnership currently? Look, first, <laughs> we love you guys. <laughs> Look, it's, it's, it's been fantastic for us. You guys have built something magical. I mean, quite frankly, there are two things uh, for us when it comes to the partnership. The first is these workloads, it's just so different and new. I've been in this infrastructure business for you know, three decades. No now. one has ever seen infrastructure Not, like yeah. this. And, and the workload, the pattern of the workload, these, you know, these training jobs are so synchronous and so large and so data parallel. Um, and so the first thing that we have been doing is building in partnership with you the system, all the way from thinking from power to the DC to the rack to the accelerators to the network, uh, and just you know, really, the, uh, the shape of Azure is drastically changed uh, and is changing rapidly in support of these models that you're building. And so our job number one is to build the best system so that you can build the best models and then make that all available to developers. Great. And how do you think about the future? Future of the partnership or future of AI or whatever? Yeah, there, <laughs> there are a couple of things for me that I think are going to be very, very key for us, right? One is I just described how the systems that are needed as you aggressively push forward on your roadmap um, requires us to be on the top of our game. And we intend fully to commit ourselves deeply to making sure you all, as builders of these foundation models, have not only the best systems uh, for training and inference, but the most compute so that you can keep pushing we appreciate forward uh, on the frontiers. And then, of course, we're very grounded in the fact that safety matters, and safety is not something that you'd care about later, but it's something we do shift left on, and we're very, very focused on that with you all. Great. Well, I think we have the best partnership in tech. I'm excited for us to build AGI together. No, I'm really um, excited. Have a fantastic Thank you very much for coming. OK. Even though this is a developer conference, we can't resist making some improvements to ChatGPT. So a small one, ChatGPT now uses GPT-4 Turbo with all the latest improvements, including the latest knowledge cutoff, which will continue to update. That's all live today. It can now browse the web when it needs to, write and run code, analyze data, take and generate images, and much more. And we heard your feedback, that model picker, extremely annoying. That is gone, starting today. You will not have to click around the drop-down menu. ChatGPT will just know what to use and when you need it. But that's not the main thing. I want to talk about where we're headed and the main thing we're here to talk about today. We know that people want AI that is smarter, more personal, more customizable, can do more on your behalf. Eventually, you'll just ask a computer for what you need, and it'll do all of these tasks for you. These capabilities are often talked in the AI field about as agents. The upsides of this are going to be tremendous. So today, we're taking our first small step that moves us towards this future. We're thrilled to introduce GPTs. GPTs are tailored versions of chat GPT for a specific purpose. You can build a GPT a customized version of ChatGPT for almost anything, with instructions, expanded knowledge, and actions. And then you can publish it for others to use. So first, let's look at a few examples. Canva has built a GPT that lets you start designing by describing what you want in natural language. If you say, make a poster for dev, a dev date reception this afternoon, this evening, and you give it some details, it'll generate a few options to start with by hitting Canva's APIs. Now, this concept may be familiar to some of you. We've evolved our plugins to be custom actions for GPTs. You can keep chatting with this to see different iterations, 
And when you see one you like, you can click through to Canva for the full design experience. So now, we'd like to show you a GPT Live. Zapier has built a GPT that, let that lets you perform actions across 6,000 applications to unlock all kinds of integration possibilities. I'd like to introduce Jessica, one of our solutions architects, who is going to drive this demo. Welcome, Jessica. My name is Jessica Shea. I work with partners and customers to bring their product to live. And today, I, I can't wait to show you how hard we've been working on this. So to start, where your GPT will live is on this upper left corner. I'm going to start with clicking on the Zapier AI Actions. And on the right-hand side, you can see that's my calendar for today. To start, I can ask, what's on my schedule for today? We build GPTs with security in mind. So before it performs any action or share data, it will ask for your permission. So right here, I'm going to say allowed. So GPT is designed to take in your instructions, make the decision on which capability to call to perform that action, and then execute that for you. So you can see right here, it's already connected to my calendar. It pulls into my, my information. And then I've also prompted it to identify conflicts on my calendar. So you can see right here, it actually was able to identify that. So it looks like I have something coming up. So what if I want to let Sam know that I have to leave early? So right here I say, let Sam know I got to go, um, chasing GPUs. So with that, I'm going to swap to my conversation with Sam. And then I'm going to say, yes, please run that. Sam, did you get that? I did. Awesome. So this is only a glimpse of what is possible. And I cannot wait to see what you all will build. Thank you. And back to you, Sam. Thank you, Jessica. So and later this month, we're going to launch the GPT store. You can list a GPT there. And we'll be able to feature the best and the most popular GPTs. Of course, we'll make sure that GPTs in the store follow our policies before they're accessible. Revenue sharing is important to us. We're going to pay people who build the most useful and the most used GPTs a portion of our revenue. We're excited to foster a vibrant ecosystem with the GPT store. Just from what we've been building ourselves over the weekend, we're confident there's going to be a lot of great stuff. We're excited to share more information soon. So those are GPTs, and we can't wait to see what you'll build. These experiences are great, but they have been hard to build, sometimes taking months, teams of dozens of engineers. There's a lot to handle to make this custom assistant experience. So today, we're making that a lot easier with our new Assistance API. The Assistance API includes persistent threads, so they don't have to figure out how to deal with long conversation history, built-in retrieval, code interpreter, a working Python interpreter in a sandbox environment, and of course, the improved function calling that we talked about earlier. So we'd like to show you a demo of how this works. And here is Raman, our head of developer experience. Today, we're launching new modalities in the API, but we are also very excited to improve the developer experience for you all to build assistive agents. So let's dive right in. Imagine I'm building Wanderlust, a travel app for global explorers, and this is the landing page. I've actually used GPT-4 to come up with these destination ideas. And for those of you with a keen eye, these illustrations are generated programmatically using the new DALI 3 API available to all of you today. So it's pretty remarkable. But let's enhance this app by adding a very simple assistant to it. This is the screen. We're going to come back to it in a second. First, I'm going to switch over to the new assistant's playground. Creating an assistant is easy. You just give it a name, some initial instructions, a model. In this case, I'll pick GPT-4 Turbo. And here, I'll also go ahead and select some tools. I'll turn on Code Interpreter. And that's it. Our assistant is ready to go. If I say, hey, let's go to Paris. All right. That's it. With just a few lines of code, users can now have a very specialized assistant right inside the app. So here, if I carry on and say, hey, what are the top 10 things to do? We're going to have the assistant respond to that again. And here, what's interesting is that the assistant knows about functions, including those to annotate the map that you see on the right. And so now, all of these pins are dropping in real time here. Yeah, it's pretty cool. And that integration allows our natural language interface to interact fluidly with components and features of our app. And it truly showcases now the harmony you can build 
between AI and UI where the assistant is actually taking action. But next, next, let's talk about retrieval. And retrieval is about giving our assistant more knowledge beyond these immediate user messages. In fact, I got inspired and I already booked my tickets to, uh, to Paris. So I'm just gonna drag and drop here this PDF. What it's uploading, I can just sneak peek uh, at it. Very typical United flight ticket. And behind the scene here, what's happening is that retrieval is reading these files and boom, the information about this PDF appeared on the screen. And this is, of course, a very tiny PDF, but assistants can parse long-form documents from extensive text to intricate product specs, depending on what you're building. In fact, I also booked an Airbnb, so I'm just gonna drag that over to the conversation as well. But just because OpenAI is managing this API does not mean it's a black box. In fact, you can see the steps that the tools are taking right inside your developer dashboard. So here, if I go ahead and click on threads, this is the thread I believe we're currently working on. And see, like these are all the steps, including the functions being called with the right parameters and uh, the PDFs I've just uploaded. But let's move on to a new capability that many of you have been requesting for a while. Code Interpreter is now available today in the API as well. That gives the AI the ability to write and execute code on the fly, but even generate files. So let's see that in action. If I say here, hey, will be four friends staying at this Airbnb. What's my share of it plus my flights? Now here, what's happening is that Code Interpreter noticed that it should write some code to answer this query. So now it's computing you know, the number of days in Paris, the number of friends. It's also doing some exchange rate calculation behind the scene to get this answer for us. Not the most complex math, but you get the picture. Imagine you're building a very complex like finance app that's crunching countless numbers, plotting charts. So really any task that you'd normally tackle with code, then Code Interpreter will work great for you. All right, I think my trip to Paris is sorted. So to recap here, we've just seen how you can quickly create an assistant that manages state for your user conversations, leverages external tools like knowledge and retrieval and Code Interpreter, and finally invokes your own functions to make things happen. So thank you so much, everyone. Have a great day. Back to you, Sam. Pretty cool, huh? All right, so that Assistance API goes into beta today, and we are super excited to see what you all do with it. Anybody can enable it. Over time, GPTs and Assistants, our precursors to agents, are going to be able to do much, much more. They'll gradually be able to plan and to perform more complex actions on your behalf. We believe it's important for people to start building with and using these agents now to get a feel for what the world is going to be like as they become more capable. And as we've always done, we'll continue to update our systems based off of your feedback. So we're super excited that we got to share all of this with you today. We introduced GPTs, custom versions of ChatGPT that combine instructions, extended knowledge, and actions. We launched the Assistance API to make it easier to build assistive experiences with your own apps. These are our first steps towards AI agents, and we'll be increasing their capabilities over time. We introduced a new GPT-4 Turbo model that delivers improved function calling, knowledge, lowered pricing, new modalities, and more. And we're deepening our partnership with Microsoft. We do all of this because we believe that AI is going to be a technological and societal revolution. It will change the world in many ways, and we're happy to get to work on something that will empower all of you to build so much for all of us. As intelligence gets integrated everywhere, we will all have superpowers on demand. We're excited to see what you all will do with this technology and to discover the new future that we're all going to architect together. We hope that you'll come back next year. What we launched today is going to look very quaint relative to what we're busy creating for you now. Thank you for all that you do. Thank you for coming here today.